Hi friends, this is Jennifer from the Jennifer Maker DIY and Craft Blog. Today I am going to show you how to make this adorable fairy house card. So this card actually lays flat and pops open to look like this. And I was inspired to make this from the weather. It's spring in Michigan and summer is definitely coming. So here we have the card and you can see there's a lot of little details to it which I absolutely love vines growing up the side, a little mouse hiding in the back. Isn't he adorable? There's a welcome mat, of course, and if you open the front door, you can see inside the fairy house. And I put a rocking chair, a little table with a teapot, and a picture of a fairy on the wall. And of course there's a staircase so I think that this is a beautiful card it would be great for a summer birthday a fairy lover you can fold, fold it flat mail it uh, you can write a message right there on the roof so that they see it right when they open it this is how you make it you're going to need um, some things uh, several things actually um, I'm using spray mount and tape I'm also using tacky glue which I'm not showing here but you're gonna want to have that as well and then this is cut out from three different pieces of paper there's the brown um, the like wood grain these are patterned papers and then I also am using a sheet of pink paper for the flowers and the teapot and the welcome mat and things like that so um, it doesn't take too many too much materials as you can see I'm using 12 by 12 inch paper which I think works best so let's take out the pieces files are free on my blog at jennifermaker.com in their SVG files and you just cut them right out I used a Cricut cutting machine and it cuts out pretty clear uh, cleanly I've tested it in um, many different uh, pieces of software just to be sure and so these are the pieces we have the main building so a bridge piece the roof the stairs the door these little round things are the things that go around the windows um, and those sort of rectangle things are for putting the furniture on um, so we need to use our spray adhesive to put things like these little tiny things on and then you just position these um, casements on the windows um, because I have a pattern paper I need to pay attention to what direction uh, the wood grain is going and if you're just using plain old tan or any other color it doesn't matter This is the door and I'm putting a little brown circle on it as a handle and to attach the door I'm going to use a piece of tape because the tape is going to act as a hinge and it's pretty easy to use so um, just a strip right there on the edge see it works I'm applying these little decorative pink hinges to the door um, just to class it up a bit Okay, let's put some more decorations on. I have this vine, I'm gonna set it right over here so it goes right above the window. I designed it like that. And then put some little pink flowers on the vine. I think that looks pretty sweet. I'm gonna put the broom by the door so the fairy can get to it easily in her bucket, right there next to it. And a toadstool growing in the back. I cut out lots of extra flowers, uh, three different sizes. So I'm gonna sprinkle these around liberally because in my mind, this fairy loves flowers. Cause that's probably, I love flowers, right? <laughs> um, obviously all these decorations can be totally customized to who you're giving it to. This is, it could even be a, a simpler house. It doesn't have to be a fairy house, right? Um, that's the cool thing about this, I think, is that you can decide um, what kind of paper, you know, what the colors, patterns, what accessories you put on the outside and the inside. And the welcome mat, I think, is really cool because it folds down when you open it and it just gets attached right here on the underside, just like that. The fairy picture gets put on the inside before you fold it. It'll be a lot easier. Now, these hinges didn't want to stay with just the spray adhesive, so I'm gluing them down. Um, to make sure they don't wobble around. Now it's time to fold this up. Um, there are score lines in the cut files and 
you just uh, follow the fold lines. There's a fold for each of the segments. And then there's also one at the, um, at the end, which is a tab. So you can see that uh, when it's folded up, there's this little tab just gets glued and the side of the house gets glued to it, just like this. Now I like to lay it down flat and position it so that we know that it lays flat and doesn't want to buckle or anything. And I allow it to dry like this. Um, if you're using tacky glue, be sure to give it you know, some time. Now this is the, the hinge for the roof and you fold these tabs in counter to each other. So one goes one way, one goes the other. And then you put the glue on the little triangle pieces and they go right on the pieces of the roof, right at the peak of the roof. And it's, it, and it's really fascinating that this just becomes a hinge and can fold flat. That's what I love about it. Now, let's make the stairs. It has two tabs that fold on either side. It's pretty simple. And we're gonna insert the staircase right into the bottom. So we're gonna glue the sides. And we're gonna put it right in here just like this. I'm putting it up flat against the back side and folding it flat to make sure that um, everything stays flat. And now these are the furniture pieces. I've already put my little rocking chair and my little table on. So I'm gonna glue the sides and they slide right in from the bottom. Um, you can position them where you want. I've chosen to put them you know, equally distant from each other so that it has sort of a 3D look when I open it. I like that. You could put whatever you wanted on these. You could even put a message on these. The roof gets folded in half, and then we glue uh, this hinge just like this and set the roof on top of it. And it glues right to those two tabs and lays flat. Isn't that cool? Be sure to give it time to dry and make sure that your pieces don't move position, You know, especially if you're using glue that doesn't dry uh, really fast. And here we have our finished fairy house card. I think it turned out really nice and I love the potential for this house card to become a lot of other things. And also I started my Patreon account thanks to my son Alex who suggested it. And I am so overwhelmed by your support in just a week. I so thankful. So my Patreon supporters get this video and the files a day early as a thank you for your support. And thank you to all of my Patreon supporters. I am really touched by your support and your generosity and your encouragement. Uh, I can't tell you how much this means to me. I look forward to making more projects for you. I asked my patrons what project I should design next and the votes are in. I'll be making some sweet little birds in the birdcage. Now remember, everyone can access my files for free on my blog at jennifermaker.com. But if you're a Patreon supporter, you get access to them a day early, as well as access to my special collection of files as a thank you. And there's also a secret Facebook group where I show behind the scenes um, videos and photos. For example, this week I did a live Facebook video of myself putting together my first prototype, which was rather exciting and a little bit scary, but totally fun. Um, and Patreon it only starts at $1 because I know our crafting hobby is rather pricey. So thank you so much for watching my video. I want to give a special shout out to my dear five and tier 10 supporters, Tammy Gilbert, Robin Creter, D. Jairus Harris, Bridget Oglesby, Karen Tritton, Heather Mueller, Laura Robeson, and Deb Koff. Thank you so much for supporting me. Please let me know what you think in the comments and let me know if you have any questions or ideas. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you can find all of my future crafting videos. Until next time, bye!